I got this old TV stand for $30 off of Marketplace and I had no idea where this project was going to lead me. All I knew was I wanted to do something cool with it. Maybe try out a few new techniques or maybe build a new base. But by the end of it all, it became my favorite flip that I've ever done. And this thing was so heavy and so awkward to try to lift. Thank God I have Kendall to help me. So I didn't really like this old like front apron, so we wanted to take it off, but it was held in with these blocks that were also glued in. Nice. It was actually not nice, and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so we ended up cracking this entire leg up here because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I forgot about a screw that was down here, so that was my fault. Um, I broke it yeah, Kendall broke it, but <laughs> I made it possible for him to break it. But over there, that side is way better because I undid those screws, and now. We get to move on. We had come home with the piece at around like nine o'clock at night. So by this time it was getting pretty late. And so the next day we began by taking off the doors just so they wouldn't like bang around when we went to trim off the base with the jigsaw. and everything was going fine until we ran into another problem. What is it? It's the block. It turns out that I had measured out the cut too high, which means we had extra resistance from those wooden blocks. I think we're gonna handsaw <laughs> the sides. Oh. So we thought this thing was solid wood just because of how sturdy and heavy it was, but it ended up being mostly MDF. These side panels too were veneered on both sides, so it was really hard to tell until we cut into it. They were really trying to trick me with this one. So it is a little uneven, so I just tried to smooth it down just as best as I could with the sander. It still wasn't perfect, but by this time, I was beat. Hey, okay. Done for the day. <laughs> And now we're finally able to get started on stripping off the top. Uh. Is that the rest? Yeah. Oh, oh it's like a different product. I took it so much. You'll see a lot of people like using a brush to spread their stripper, but really anything will work. You don't have to go and buy something. Oh. 
totally ready. <laughs> oh god. I might want to go clean that off. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds like Kendall's really enjoying his stripper over here. And after most of the gunk is scraped off, I just went in with some lacquer thinner and steel wool to try to dissolve the rest. And now it's time to sand everything off that we couldn't get to before. For this, I'm using a 150 and then a 180. And because of all that dark finish on there, it was kind of hard to tell what wood was under all of that finish. But once we reached raw wood, we realized that we had a beautiful cherry wood top. Whenever I have to do the insides of something, I find it a lot easier just to take off the backs. And now with the backs off, I could take out those shelves to sand away the finish on there. Cosmetic cracks like this can be filled with glue and then sand it down with your power sander while it's still tacky. The dust that your sander makes will mix into that glue and then it'll fill it in and it's barely noticeable. We're gonna go with the wood paint combo today so it's finally time to scuff sand the body to get it ready for primer. It might seem like we're going backwards here and that's because we are. I had totally forgotten about these doors until it came time to prime them, so I quickly cleaned and gave them a scuff sand. I'm using Kill Spray Primer today since it's super quick and I have a lot of area to cover. It's also oil-based which is super durable and it'll stop any bleed through that I have. I use this mini blower all the time just to get excess dust out of the space because otherwise it could land in your finishes while they're still wet and we don't want any of that. <laughs> oh. Another really important thing to remember is to sand your primer once it's dry, especially if you're using a product like this Kill Stuff because it dries pretty rough. And with these foam sanding pads, I don't have to worry about ruining the shape because it conforms to whatever surface that I'm sanding. So it's great for like sanding trim or if you have any curves on your piece, um, it won't ruin the shape if you use these. I don't really know why I'm being so threatening here, but moving on to paint, we're going to be using the color Broadway.
to wash that out now and waste all that paint? Huh? I don't? Look how much less there is now. Could have coated it once already. I said we leave it. Okay. <laughs> Needless to say, we fool around a lot on the job, but time to get back to it. Let's paint. Oh, another good thing about taking off the backs is that so your spray can exit out the back. There's been so many times where I've left the backs on just to get all the paint, poly, whatever, flying right back in my face. We're just fixing up a couple more imperfections before laying on the second coat of paint. So like I said in the beginning of the video, we're building a base to go with this TV stand, but in reality we started the build before we painted it black. But we're going to be using oak 1x4s for the fronts, 1x3s for the sides, and for the legs we'll be using 2x2s. And we wanted to do something different, so we're going with a curved front apron. We're enlisting the help of a dowel just to help us with the shape. And as you can see, we don't really have a reliable workbench, which is why we're using the top of the TV stand. It can't really handle the vibration of the jigsaw though, so I needed to hold it down for Kendall to make the cut. It's not the best way to do this, but we just made do with what we had. And then we used our bandsaw to cut our legs down to size. Now it might look a little confusing for now, but once we have all our pieces, you'll start to see how it all comes together.
And now to attach the base together, we'll be using our Craig jig just to drill some pocket holes. This is such a great tool to have if you're new to building bases. Sorry, we put the pocket screws in, but my camera turned off. So hopefully I have enough memory to do this for you. It's actually my camera now. Hey. All right, router time. Like he said, we're using a router just to do a little round over action to make it look a bit more finished. <laughs> I'm using glue like before just to fill in that tiny gap before sanding right on top of it. There's a gap, I don't see it. You're on your own. <laughs> Okay, well, shoot. The wind was not letting us have our tarp down, so we had no choice but to abandon it. You win this time. Now at this point, we just needed to put the backs back on to put some top coat on the body as well as stain all the wood. I feel like I'm on the top stretch. You are. We are using the salmon water-based stain on everything, but since it dries or it says it dries really fast, I'm just gonna mist it to create like a little slip coat. Oh, okay. Oh, that spreads. And now it's finally time to take off the covering and stain the top. We actually got this top super clean, but we had to do so much sanding in order to get it like this since there was so much dark finish stuck in the pores. And wood grain will raise when you put water on it, so Kendall's just sanding down the grain that's been popped. Thank you. 
Now after everything's set time to dry, we're going in with some oil-based polyurethane to seal all that wood. We chose to go with an oil-based poly because it makes the wood look and feel nourished instead of like dry and plasticky like some water-based polys have a tendency to do. Plus it embers over time so that's exactly what I want with this rich stain. Okay, now we go inside and attach the base to the body. Also, check out my cool new pencil. I got super excited when I saw it at the store. And all that's left to do now is attach the doors back on, and after that, we are all done. Is it just me or are doors super finicky to put back on? Now, before I show you the final reveal, I want to take it back to how it started. This old thing was actually in pretty good shape, but there was nothing really wow about it. After a lot of hard work and running into so many obstacles along the way, we were finally able to get it to look how we had imagined in our heads. The color of the wood is so rich and deep, and I really love the base that we were able to build. If you're still watching up to here, I just want to give you a big thank you. I know this video was pretty long, but I really appreciate you for being here. And with that, we will see you next time here on Holly's Garage.